Hello, 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 everyone. I almost said, <laughs> welcome to Figure Drawing Friday. It's not Friday yet. It's oh, we're almost there, almost there. It's Wednesday, it's Wednesday, it's Wednesday, and we are doing a study of one of my favorite, favorite artists of all time. Um, that sounds really dramatic, but um, he's a great, great artist. I love him so much. Um, and this is one of the artists that I've actually had an amazing opportunity to speak with several times. Um, I first met him when he was a guest speaker at my school in School of Visual Arts. Um, he came into my classroom. Um, it was Richard Gore's class, and it was a storytelling for animation class, which is, um, it was a great class. I love Richard Gore as a professor. So if you are at School of Visual Arts, I don't know if he's still teaching, but definitely take his class if you ever get the opportunity. I say hi to Mr. Gory for me. <laughs> but Dan Haskett is amazing. Um, he's helped me so much and guided me so much. And he's really, he's really a great person. A humble, humble artist. Um, really, really kind. Um, not every artist that you meet in the industry is going to be kind. Not every artist that you meet in the industry is going to be, take the time to really try and guide you. Um, some people are just butthole. <laughs> that's, that's like the best I can say. Some people are just not really that nice. Some people really have a lot of ego. I mean, I've talked about that before in art industry, um, not just in animation, but in every art field, there's going to be a couple of you know what bags and they just like have something to prove or something whatever and they're not going to be nice to you and they're going to rip up your portfolio and whatever dan haskett he's been in the industry since the 70s so over 40 years super super nice super kind and super amazing um if, let me go on ahead into this is actually the only artist so far in studying the masses that I really actually have gotten a chance to really talk to on a one-on-one -on -one level. So like, um, I guess that's why I can go into it a little bit more about my personal experience with Dan Haskett and um, how I feel about him and how nice he was. So anyway, um, he's one of the very few, unfortunately, um, black car character designers that you will meet in the industry. And it's really, it's not a diverse industry, unfortunately. It really should be. Um, I know there's efforts being made by women in animation to bring even more women in, but even as far as people of color, um, the animation industry has not been very diverse in that, but hopefully going into the future, things will start to shift. And I think there is somewhat of a shift probably happening now, but um, there's still a long way to go. But anyway. I'm going to go ahead on into, that was my little intro about Dan Haskett. He's amazing. Um, he's worked on Tiny Toon Avengers. He's worked on Animaniacs. He's worked on Prince of Egypt. He's worked on lots of different Scooby-Doo series. Um, he has worked on The Little Mermaid. He was part of the design cast for Ariel. He's worked on Beauty and the Beast, where he submitted design for the character for Belle. Um, most recently, I believe he's still at Warner Brothers working on a newer Scooby-Doo series. I'm not sure if he's still there, but he may be, may or may not be. Um, what else has he worked on? He's, he's really good at making, like, sexy animal characters. So he does, like, Lola Bunny, um, Babs Bunny, um, the Mink in Animaniacs, Minerva the Mink. Um, Beefy the Skunk um, in Penny Tune Adventures. So he's he's really awesome. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to work on a couple of those characters. We won't be able to do all of them, unfortunately. You can check out all of his um, resume at IMDb, which if I remember, hopefully if I remember, I'll put a link to it here on um, on this page, but I would like to, I don't think he has a website, but you can always see all of his work that he's done on IMDb. It's imdb.com. If you're not familiar with it, it's a great movie website. And I'm going to switch to her. Excuse me. And they have lots of, um, they will tell you, if you've never been to IMDb, they'll tell you all the people that are in the movie, all the cast, 
all the actors who directed it, who produced it. It's a really good resource just for finding out more about movies and television shows and even like mini series and things like that. So without further ado, which was, I think this was like the most grand intro that I've done <laughs> for any um, of the Studying the Masters series, but it's been a few weeks since we've done Studying the Masters. And like I said before, Dan has to be special. So I just wanted to acknowledge that. And I think it's enough space yet. I'm gonna do a couple of these. So see how many we can do. But I'm gonna do five minute poses and see where we end up with that. We'll do five minute poses. Um, we don't have all of his characters, like I said, but we're just gonna, you know, do a little bit of an homage and try and get some of these down, see what we can do with them. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the timer. We're gonna do five minutes. So let's go ahead and let us go. And I see this little guy. I kind of like that. Just smaller. It's too. It's. I think it's a whole other challenge too when you're trying to do like um, recreated series or like spin up series. Like obviously Tiny Toon Adventures, which was my. I loved that show when I was a kid. Um, it's really all based off of um, the designs from Looney Tunes, so Merry Melodies and Bugs Bunny. And um, so you really, when you come into a show that already has a history, you kind of have the bar set pretty high already because people are expecting a certain quality. The fans, the fan base are expecting a certain quality. And you kind of have to bring it, you know? You kind of have to be ready to be a little bit on the model and kind of make sure you're getting the right, um, you're setting the right um, mood, I guess, for the type of cartoon it is because Warner Brothers is so specific, you know, people can tell, you know, if you get it wrong, like that's not how a Looney Tunes character should be, you know, if it's too one way or the other. So I think that's something that you have to be careful and Dan Haskett really, I think he really nailed it. This is Bab. She's so Let's see. I really like how he pulled off the pigtails as ears. It's really clever. Mm. Oh, these cheeks are really good. You can do that one. And I really think that Dan Haskett really found a home with um, with Warner Brothers. I think that that is really like his sort of style. Like his sort of aesthetic feels more like Warner Brothers. Because he's worked for, he's been all over the place. He's worked for Disney, he's worked for DreamWorks, he's worked for Warner. And I just feel like he's from and Hanna-Barbera. Um, actually, no, I think he worked for Scooby-Doo after they were already acquired by um, Warner Brothers. So, anyway, I think that he really found a home corner. I really think that that fits his sort of thing. He's also worked on Raggedy Ann with um, Richard Williams, which he talked about. He worked on A Fox and the Hound, which I think was his first film that he worked on when he started at Disney back in the 70s. Um, I'm just, I, I, I didn't even do a little... <laughs> I usually read like a little blurb of um, my, um, all the guys here from studying the masters, but Dan Haskett, I already knew this. <laughs> so I didn't have to do too much research. Uh, I wanted to double check on some of the characters that he's done, but I really didn't have to do too much because I kind of already knew about Dan. Dan's great. And like I said, one of the few that I've met are just really, really nice and humble and Kind and I really appreciate that. 
Even another cool one of that that I saw with um, the Bab sort of um, dressed in all these costumes, which is really a very Bab thing to do. <laughs> she really liked to dress up as lots of different characters, like different TV personalities and movie personalities, and I think that's kind of what made the show really um, stand out in many ways. Just a commentary on um, pop culture, which I, I love it. I love how they, they pull that up on this show. When are they bringing um, Tiny Toons to Netflix? That's my question. I would watch that all day long. Seriously, that's what I do. I would really, really watch today. And it would still like be funny today. I feel like it would still be hilarious to an adult. Just because there's so much commentary on pop culture and music and just family situations. You remember when they went to that Happy World Land? <laughs> that is my favorite. I love that. It was like a, it was pretty much a Disneyland, but they called it in the show Happy World Land. Move on to the next one. Oh, it was so funny. So funny. You'll have to like YouTube that whenever you're done. Done. Happy World Land. It's so good. <laughs> I actually want to link that. It's so funny. Anyway, we're going to do, and these are wacko. Uh, these are from Animaniacs, obviously. It has the title there, but um, let's do some of these and see what, how many we can do in five minutes. So let's start. Let's start with this one. That's really cute. It looks almost like Sonic or something. It's very 90s. -ish. I love 90s animation style. It's really, I grew up with it, so of course I love it, but I just think it is really cute style. Big eyes. Big baseball caps. A lot of characters have backwards hats because, you know, I guess rap was starting to be a little bit more, and hip hop was starting to be a little bit more mainstream, a little bit more. Um, kid-friendly with artists like MC Hammer and stuff like that, so, you know, I guess backwards hats are cool. Like, come on, Criss Cross, you remember Criss Cross? <laughs> you guys might be too young to remember Criss Cross, or too cool, <laughs> because that's kind of a nerdy reference, but anyway. Okay, so, I'm just going to do some I did a couple of warm-ups because I realized I really like to do warm-ups with my figures. Even as I'm doing stuff like this, I still like to do my warm-ups with figures, and I didn't do my figures this morning, which is what I really would prefer to. Oh, I had a meeting today. I don't know, should I mention the studio and everything? Uh, I, had, I was going to record this in the morning, actually. I was going to record Studying the Masters this morning, but... I realized there was going to be a big um, talk happening, so I went to that. I was at my university, and that was this morning from I did at ten. It went on till God, I didn't get out of there till maybe two or something like that. But anyway, that was cool. Um, but one of the things about portfolio reviews is you kind of have to get a lot of them to really get it. Um, because at this point, I've had my portfolio reviewed by a lot of people. And sometimes people will love my work. And sometimes people won't necessarily <laughs> love my work. But if someone tells me, like, it's bad <laughs> or it's it's not um, studio worthy or something like that and then you kind of have to wonder that's i don't really i'm not really buying that i'm really not buying that i'm not buying when people are overly critical 
I like guidance. And maybe that's just my personal thing. I like you to tell me, okay, well, this, um, I like what you did here. This is what you do to make it even better or whatever. Give me that. I don't like it if you tell me, like, and this is beyond just, like, you know, getting your feelings hurt or something like that. Because, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, they told me, like, they like my portfolio and, you know, whatever. And I appreciate that. <laughs> but, like, in general, with portfolio reviews, um, I had a lot of people looking at it, and sometimes, like, professors will say one thing, and then one studio will say something else, and another studio will say something else, and you kind of have to weigh them all against your own common sense. Like, if you're really honest with yourself, you know what you need to improve on. There's always going to be blind spots, though, so if somebody shows you something, you see that, and you're like, oh, I didn't see that. It's true, like, I can see, like, it would be better if I did this. That makes sense to me. But if it's something that it's like, that doesn't really make sense to me, then I don't think that you should change it just because someone said to. Um, because they, it might just be completely and totally their own opinion. So, um, everyone has an opinion. Everyone is going to have their own opinion, and it might not be aligned with um, whatever your goals are. I think if your goal is only to get a job, that's going to hurt you in the long run. That's where I was when I first moved out here to California. Like, I was really just wanting to get a job. My feelings were hurt really easily. And I did pretty much everything. <laughs> Everyone said, one minute I thought I was out of my character designer, one minute I was a storyboard artist, one minute I don't know. And then, like, I was kind of like every time somebody told me to do something, I was like trying to meet that whatever they said. And that's that gets you depressed real quick. That got me like depressed and confused. I didn't know what I was. I didn't know where I was going. <laughs> one person said, Oh, well, choose what you want. And I'm going to start a timer. Another one said, Well, if you be a character designer, you're never going to get a job because there aren't any character designers. But another person said, Well, if you get a job doing store building, you're like, Doing storyboard, you're going to be miserable. So you have to, <laughs> you have to figure out, uh, I guess, who you are first. And I, and every time, like you know, it's hard because we all need money, right? We all need money. Like that's the thing, you know. Even if you're not in it for the money, it doesn't matter. You still have to pay rent. Like you're not going to tell your landlord, "I'm not in it for the money," because they're still going to kick you out, right? So anyway. Um, I know I'm kind of ranting right now, but I think it's kind of necessary in a sense because I don't think that you should be too flexible with um, listening to what everyone has to say about your portfolio because I literally had two people from two different studios once say, oh, this is great. Uh, I'd like to see more of this. And another person say, uh, take this out of your portfolio like this, about the same drawing. So like, you really, really have to hear what people say. If people are mean, then just kind of don't take it personally. Just kind of be like, that's just, they're just a bad person. <laughs> and I don't think that, I don't think you need to be mean to be, like I said, I'm doing Dan Haskett drawings right now. Dan Haskett is like the nicest person that, like, really, like, so, so nice. And he's been in the industry for, longer than any of these people who have reviewed my portfolio and he is so humble and so nice so you don't have to be um a jerk to review someone's portfolio if you review too many portfolios and you feel like you can't be nice then stop reviewing portfolios i feel like like there's no need to be rude and there's no need to like um just say something mean so that Maybe you think that'll make them take you more seriously, or maybe you think they have a nice portfolio and they, you know, you really want to find the one thing that's wrong with it or whatever. But I just feel like, I don't know. <laughs> well, I know how I feel like, but I just feel like, I don't know. 
there's some things about this industry that I really don't like. I love animation. I love drawing. I love making art. But I know I spend a lot of time making art. I'm not going to not sleep to make art. I'm not going to die <laughs> to make art. I feel like you have to put a time in. You don't have to put that much time in. You put in the time when you need to put the time. On average, I draw maybe 20, 30 minutes a day on average. If I'm doing a project and I'm doing like a like a portfolio page or like a, a full fully rendered colored um, drawing, then I'm gonna spend four four hours on it, you know, something like that. But on average, I'm not gonna do a whole lot more than that because I got a wife too. <laughs> I still gotta cook. I still gotta pick up my son. I still gotta do homework with him. I still gotta make time for the things that I enjoy doing, like dancing. I still gotta make time for taking care of my health, going to work out. Um, so on average, I'm not gonna spend crazy hours. I'm gonna spend a couple of hours, but not. I'm not gonna spend crazy hours because. I love art and I love making art, but it's not worth killing yourself over, especially if you have a, a life. Like most of these people that tell you that you don't need to like work at three o'clock in the morning and all this stuff, like you're not married. They don't have kids or you know, or or maybe they're leaving too much of the dependency on their spouse, unfortunately, and sadly. A lot of people do that. They leave the spouse to take care of the kids and do everything while they spend all their time, you know, working on their craft. And if that's making art, then that's that. But that's unfair. I feel like that's really unfair and that's that's wrong. And I don't feel like people should do that. But does it mean that you should suck off? No. You should work on it. But don't drive yourself nuts working on it. Depends. Sometimes I spend more, but I never spend crazy hours. Really, I think really my average is it's not crazy at all. Like 12 hours, 16 hours a day? No, no, mm -mm. I'm not doing that. And I'm gonna hit the timer. But when you, the thing is, when you do it every day and you do it all the time, um. It adds up. Let me hit the timer. It really does add up. Um, so, okay, let's see. I'm just gonna leave this cluster. I'm gonna do her body first. Let's see. But. You want to get better, and you want to get better. You have this, and you have to have some finished stuff. But don't go crazy with it. I think spending a, a bit of time on it every day is enough. Depending on what you're working on, some projects that you're working on are going to take longer. Like when I was doing all my thumbnails. For the graphic novel that I'm trying to do right now, <laughs> I was a little bit more strict on myself. I made myself work, you know, um, doing at least a page a day. Sometimes a page would take um, three, four hours. Usually it was about three, four hours. And then also on top of that, I was doing um, drawing in my sketchbook every day and doing figure drawing every day. So. Maybe at the most, like five hours, something like that. And then that's it. Call it a day. Do something else. Like, there's other things in life. You know? I'm just saying, I wouldn't kill myself on it. But I gave myself enough time. And this is from, um, these designs are from um, the chipmunk, Alvin and the chipmunks. This is the girl, Brittany, which I used to think she was so pretty. 
I wanted to look like her when I was a kid. I was like, oh my god, I wish I was pretty like that. <laughs> so silly, but yeah, I used to think that she was so pretty when I was a little girl. And even she, she's got like a little bit of a little bit of maturity, a little bit too much fastness happening. <laughs> Or it's supposed to be like a little girl she's supposed to be you know but i think weirdly we like that really we like to see a little bit of that growing up mature, that confidence that no kid doesn't have confidence like this well not that i've seen i didn't i didn't have well i shouldn't say no but i definitely didn't have the confidence like this when i was a kid but i think little girls really like to see that because we kind of aspire to that we aspire to be confident and Beautiful, like these cartoon characters that we see on the screen, and I think that something about that makes it really appealing. So, even though I think that yeah, little, little girls don't really like that, or insecure, they fart, <laughs> and you know, they're still kids, so they're annoying me <laughs> at times. But, to see the cartoon version, you know. They have a little bit more of adult, and they're made by adults, that's why. And they're made with the peel that adults know. It's, it's kind of mixed. To make, a, to make the show, like, grab you. I was going to say to sell, but it's not, it's really not to sell it. It's like, to make it like people want a part of it want a part of that show or something if that makes sense it's angry pools this is evidently I hope I wasn't like ranting. I just feel like I have to say what I need to say and just in a way that people, because like, um, I don't know if you guys listen to Steven Silver sometimes, and um, I listen to him sometimes, and sometimes he's great, sometimes. Uh, <laughs> no, he's, he's, he's a good teacher, but sometimes, you know, sometimes he gets a little off track. Like I think. Well, anyway, sometimes he's, he's worth listening to. But anyway, he was talking about, what was he talking about that I wanted to mention? This is such a cool design. It has to be. I'll always have a This is really cool. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Do we do 10 minute goals now? I'm wondering if we should do this one as a 10 minute poll, so that might be nice. Well, let's see. Why not? Let's do this one as a 10 minute pose. I don't even know where this is from, but it's just such a cool pose. Let's see if we can really try. Yeah. So, anyway. What else I want to say? What was I trying to say? I was talking about Steven Silver. Um, I don't remember what I was going to say. What's it that he said? I totally forgot what I was going to say. Oh well. Dang it, there's something that he said that I wanted to refer to. But I don't remember what that was. Gosh, it really like hurts me when I forget stuff like that. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I can't really. There's something, there's something in there I wanted to say. But anyway, I guess it isn't bad. Oh well, I totally lost it, I guess. 
So I don't think I'm going to get it back. So I guess I should just move on. Right? Alright, anyway. So, Dan Haskett. Anything else I can remember? Um, he has a really beautiful wife too, by the way. Maybe that's why he's so happy. <laughs> She's really nice. Her name is Karen. She's an awesome lady. But I don't know. Does the wife, the difference between what makes um, an artist humble and nice, and a good wife probably, it helps. Or a good husband helps. We need a balance. Definitely can't just not have balance. And um, I think if you're in this industry, you should don't negate finding love. Don't negate having children. Um, everything, of course, has its time, but don't push it away and push it away and say, I need to work on my art, I need to work on my art, because you're going to be working on your art alone. And I don't think that you really forever anyway, want that. Um, work on your art, but also work on being happy. Find the things that make you happy, not just art, not just drawing, other things. Uh, if you live in another country, or you live in another city or state, just know that The challenge is not over. If you're planning on moving to California, the challenge is not over when you get here. Um, the good thing about living out here is that there are opportunities. There are access to portfolio reviews and stuff like that. But the bad news is not everybody's really nice. Not everybody wants to help you. And not, nobody cares. <laughs> Like, I don't know. No, that's not true. I don't want to say that. That's a wrong story. I mean, they care, but they just, they care about helping and giving back, but they don't care if you make it or not. That's nobody's concerned but your own. Nobody's going to help you make it. They might give you advice and guidance and say, well, this will help you if you do this. But nobody's going to say, we have your hand, going to help you through this process, going to get you a job at Disney, or... <laughs> and I hope, 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 that that's not your only goal. If you're an artist, like, definitely going to have other goals than to work at a studio, because studios are great, but you got to have a life, too. you got to have, you got to have something. So keep working on your portfolio. Don't give up on your portfolio, but also have other things in your, in your life. Have other ways of earning a living. Because a lot, every, I think every studio artist that I've talked to, including the one that I had the portfolio with, review with today, has been laid off at some point in their career. Everyone gets laid off in this industry. Um, some, it's, it's not likely that you'll stay unemployed if you've already gotten a nice studio job and you've already maybe made some connections and you'll probably get a job you know within a couple of months but still that couple of months can be hard and sometimes it's hard to just find your first studio job obviously um so anyway sorry going on. but can i say can I say to be helpful? I don't even know if I'm being helpful. Am I being helpful? I don't know. I hope so. I hope I'm being helpful. If I am, please let me know. No. I'm helping you anyway. Like, get insights. I think that having your own projects will give you some confidence to kind of say, hey, well, you know, I've got some things going on here, so if the studio doesn't want it right now, I'm just going to keep pushing with my project, and I want to keep building up my name online, or you know, finding people who like your work online, 
that is a really great thing to do. I think you should look for people who are interested in you and who you are interested in. I think that makes a big difference. Um, don't let like any of it be too important, I think. I think I went through that phase where it was too important to me. Well, I absolutely did. I went through that phase already. It's already passed. I still feel it creeping up on me sometimes. Like, you know, you don't get a studio job and you're nobody. Like, <laughs> I still feel that way sometimes. But I think it, it's definitely a lot better than it was. It's definitely a different experience than it was before where I really felt like, all right, I need to get a job at one of these places in order to be something. And I don't think that's not true and it's not a healthy way to think. And I don't think that anyone should feel that way. So I'm less concerned now. I still, you know, want to see the, what people think of me. <laughs> And what I do or whatever. But I'm not like, oh my god, they don't have me. Either. I suck, you know. <laughs> it's different now. Like I everyone is human. Like everyone is still a human. I bet you everyone who steals well of course everyone is still still has bad drawing days and still has bad drawing sometimes. And it doesn't matter if you just start deciding, okay, I wanna be a professional artist and I wanna do this forever. And, you know, you're still trying to figure out figure drawing and stuff like that. And, or if you've been doing it for a long time, you're like, okay, well, you know, I'm pretty good at this. I'm just thinking to, like, maybe clean up some more poses or add some new things or something like that. But I'm pretty, really, you know, well in. So, it doesn't matter either way where you come from. Um, what was it? I had a point. <laughs> I had a point somewhere, but I don't remember what it was. But it was somewhere along the lines of, you know, like, find ways to be happy. Like, it doesn't matter what phase you're at, you find ways to be happy. And find ways to find meaning and um, purpose in your work other than um, getting a job at a studio. Because I feel like that can be, that can be really... Um, starving the world of what you have to bring because I think as artists we all have something to bring to this planet and to this world and not to get too deep about it but we all have we all have something to bring like we all have a unique voice that's why you draw that's why you make art because there's something in you that is saying I need to make this because I just feel it so if you have that, then I feel like that's a gift and you need to use it. And I feel like you shouldn't deprive the world of your gift if you, if you know, you have that natural desire to create. That's something that's special and that's something that not everyone has. And I feel like um, often, oh, sadly often, it's, it's like the, the gift of the almost... Um, I don't want to say the tormented soul, <laughs> but in a way, all artists are kind of like, you know, weirdos. <laughs> or like, um, not weirdos, but yeah, like we're all kind of weird. We're all like introverted. We all have probably not amazing childhoods or like life experiences. Like something made you feel like you had to create and draw and connect you know and not um and not um what do you say the more traditional way of just talking to people something made you want to draw instead and use that as a language something <laughs> had to make you want to do that and um and i think it's the same way with comedians like something made them want to um make people laugh as a way to connect to other people or with um, musicians something made them want to create music as a way to connect with other people and i feel like um that's usually because something drove them to want to connect in that way and 
I don't know, maybe even going off the deep end, but I feel like that. Um, that's good. Okay. She's a little bit off balance, but a lot of hips, a lot of cooler, but I like this design. It's really like, a cool little design. Thank you, Dan Hester, for bringing that to us. And I got another one. This is Fifi. Oh, I love Fifi. She's so cool. So, so cool. Okay, so we're going to start again with Fifi. And then we do a 10 minute of Fifi. Fifi. I almost called her Fifi. No, that's not good. <laughs> oh gosh, I don't know if it's it, like. It's like the. French fries that you hit me the wrong way, or like what, but I feel like I'm being confused. Okay, so we're gonna do a pose of Fifi, so let's go ahead and hit the timer to start. And let's see. Maybe we'll do a little, we'll see. We'll see what works if anyone's still watching in 10 minutes. Maybe we can do a little bit of QA. I've never done a QA. That might be cool. I'm going to open up the floor for QA. Anyone is interested in asking me something, an opinion on anything related to, you know, what I've been talking about, a question about where they're at in your own personal work. I'm going to open up the floor. <laughs> After this pose and see what's going on. And I'm okay. Ah, Fifi is good. She's like a little, she looks like a little pinup model. You see, this pose is really very pinup esque. Fifi was this female skunk in Tiny Twin Adventures. And. Really big eyes. And I also wanted to look like her too. I was like, oh my god, she feels so beautiful. I wish I could look like her. Why would I want to look like a skunk? <laughs> I don't know. So silly. But that was my eight year old brain. Like, I want to look like this skunk lady because she gets all the guys. I didn't want to get guys, but I wanted to be pretty enough to. <laughs> when the time was right. <laughs> I know, it's silly. I also wanted to be a Catwoman. I like idolized all of these like powerful female characters. But they were powerful with their beauty, but it's like I don't think that people realize that that is its own power in itself. I don't, well, people maybe realize it, but they maybe don't give it credit, like give women the credit that they deserve. Like, part of female um, power is just being beautiful. <laughs> and that's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. Part of a gift. Yeah, all women have that. You just have to access it and own it, I guess. Still trying to learn how to do that. I don't really know, but trying to. Trying to learn from Fifi to access that female energy that we all have. It's a hot scout lady. So don't let anyone discourage you or, or like try and take your life. Don't be down ever because of a portfolio review or a denial in your application or whatever. Don't let it get you down ever. Okay, let's go ahead and start this. Clean up around her eye a second. Oops. All right, 
Let's give it a shot. So, what did you guys think about this studying the masters? Did you guys miss studying the masters? You guys hate studying the masters? What do you guys think about Dan Haskin? Has anyone else ever met him? I know that he's um, spoken at schools before and done master classes and things like that. If you ever get the opportunity to take a master class with Dan Haskin, or have to tell you, um, please do it. I wonder how he's doing. I was probably doing it wrong. I wonder how Dan is doing. Dan is great. I just feel bad that I was so immature in college. <laughs> like, I think you're gonna have to believe yourself. You're gonna be immature. You're gonna have to go through phases to get to where you ever you're meant to be. Like your future you. It's gonna be different. You're gonna change. You're gonna be a different person. But I think this exception the person you are now and not be too much in a rush for who you're going to be someday, you know? Then you kind of like, that's kind of like rejecting who you are right now. So, you don't want to do that. You don't want to reject who you are right now. You know, in the sake of trying to get to that, with yourself, who that is. Like she's supposed to have teeth. I don't know, Kyle looks like she should have teeth. This is me, but it feels like she should have teeth. She looks like a toothless wonder. As per usual, I thank you guys for joining me for this. Studying the masters. And hope you'll be back for figure down Friday, it's like. Yeah, let's see. A little bit Janet Jackson-esque. Huge in the 90s, super cool icon. I mean, she is still an icon, obviously, but the 90s was like the golden age. I don't know why this movie just reminded me of her or something. Like, air swoop. And you can add a couple of things too. Remember I said to think about the feeling of your character and you're drawing it, even if you're doing fan art, see the difference. delicate he was able to achieve like pose and everything really really feminine he must really have studied with the heart <laughs> because he really has like that femininity quality there he really has that down maybe he drawn a lot of women in his time perhaps
spent a lot of time studying women for sure. You must have something to do to achieve like the reality. Even though this rough, like the sketches rough that are in the in Haskate's originals, I'm still trying to try and make it complete. Trying to get what I can from his gestures and make it its own drawing. Before you get that little swoop right, you know, it's a quick little swoop, you want to get something out of it. Make the iron just a little bit. I think we're done. The same that. And okay. So let's see. Let's see. And this was really cool. So if anyone has any questions, please let me know. I'm gonna slip ahead in the meantime and search on IMDb for. And his little um dot com. I had a switch and I'm gonna see if I can put in and Haskin. And let's see. Switch my view. Let's go to here. We are. This is Dan Haskett's page, and lots of credits. Most recently, oh, he still is at um Warner doing Scooby Doo, just like when I last seen him. So he's been doing that for a while because I he was doing that when I last um met up with him in 2012 so he's still working on scooby doo that's awesome he'll be in character design um right here in sunny california he's done let's see some other things anyone have any questions for me condor the mermaid um let's see tom and jerry duck dodgers 
Then before time, oh, 11. Okay, I didn't know there were that many. Um, Larry Boy, I don't know what that is. I Spy, we need the Pooh, Cinderella 2, Happily Ever After, Lady in the Trap 2, Swan Princess, okay, Pizza, a lot of Animaniacs, you see here, Toy Story, I forgot to mention that, I think the Toy Story character design, that's amazing. The Swan Princess, the Prince of Egypt, which I was talking about, the Nuttiest Nutcracker, um, Tasmania, Tiny Toons, Fern Gully, amazing, I love that movie. Uh, let's see, Beanie and Cecil, Daffy's Quack, Daffy Duck's Quack Buster, Sesame Street, the episode, uh, animated episode there. Gosh, Pinocchio, Brave Little Toaster. God, he's done like all my kid classics. I love Brave Little Toaster. Um, the original one, not the other evil one. The original Brave Little Toaster is amazing. I'm in the Monks, Winnie the Pooh, Fox and Hound. Amazing. Okay. He started in 1977. Wow. So that is really cool. Dan Haskett is the man. All right, guys. That's going to be it for our session of studying the masters uh, featuring Dan Haskett. I want to thank you guys for joining me. Thank you guys for being a part of this wonderful um, no? <laughs> class, workshop, um, YouTube channel thank you if you haven't already please like and subscribe share it with your friends share it with your artist friends share it with your kids or your parents or your whoever you know that likes to draw your brother your sister your cousin anyone that knows that likes to uh, i love to get the message out about this channel and um if, it, if you're getting anything from it um the best way to um i guess let me know that is to share with someone else so they can get something from it also. And I want to thank you for watching. And as always, be grateful, live balanced, and be yourself every day. Every day, no matter what anyone says or anyone does. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. Love you.